Another win in the books for the South Dakota women's basketball team. They take care of Montana on Sunday afternoon and here to talk a little bit more about that. And what's coming up next is head coach Don Plitzelwhite. Don, uh, Montana came in here. They'd been struggling to defend the three a little bit and you guys really hurt them that way. Hit 15 of them on Sunday afternoon. But uh, you also balanced that, I thought, very nicely with, with a strong paint presence. Well, we try to attack the rim on, on every possession, ideally, unless we have something early offense open from the arc. And I thought we were able to establish ourselves on the defensive end and then get out and push in transition. And that started for us with a, a transition three for Hannah Shervin. Mm -hmm. And just the way that we had attacked at that point in time, she was spacing the floor because Kira was drill penetrating, spaced at the corner, got a really good look and just knocked it in. And I think that you know, we really had a lot of momentum because our defense gave us some good opportunities. You mentioned Hannah knocking out a couple of threes. Is that really fair if she adds that to her arsenal on any kind of consistent basis with everything else she does so well for you? Well, she's scoring efficiently. She's rebounding it well. I, I thought she played really well during the course of that game, not just because she hit threes, but she had some moves inside, you know, going. She had one really impressive move right at the, in the third quarter right before she came out, maybe it was the fourth quarter, where she attacked the middle, and then she stepped back through to her left hand and kind of hung in the air a little bit before she finished it. And, you know, she continues to make good decisions and make good reads with the basketball. Kicked it out a number of times to open teammates on the three-point arc for shot opportunities or next pass opportunities. Meanwhile, we're going to talk about Kira Duffy and how well she shoots the basketball, how well she scores it all the time, and that's just never going to change with her. But And she's always distributed it very well, but she's taken that to a new level. I know we talked about that last week as well, but nine assists for her on Sunday. That's a new career high. It just impresses me how well she sees the floor. Well, she's in playing in attack mode right now, and when she attacks, teams have to make some decisions against her. If they're not going to add extra defenders, she can usually find a way to get by her kid and make some good things happen. She's got some length to score over the top of you, and, so, and then if you throw extra defenders at her, she finds kids all across the floor, passing it right hand, left hand, dump, kicks it out for threes, dumps it down low to post kids. So playing really hard and playing really smart and making a lot of good things happen for us. Bench production was was really top notch, particularly with a couple of players. Taylor Frederick really came off the bench, gave you a spark there in that first half. Liv Corn Gable did the same. Um, that's going to re really be meaningful, won't it? Going down uh, as you head into the conference season, if those two can give you that on a really consistent basis like that. Well, it's absolutely vital for us to continue to grow our production uh, from our players that start, but also especially from our players off the bench in the last three to four games, they have done just a tremendous job of, of giving us a really big boost, not just on the defensive end, not just on the offensive end with movement, but also with scoring and, and taking care of the basketball and giving us opportunities to get different groups together and see, see different lineups. And we were able to do that a little bit yesterday with Montana. And we had a, a lineup really with three post players in the game at one point in time with Hannah, Taylor, and Janai. Now they didn't stay in together for a long time, but we wanted to take a look at at, at them defensively because Montana was really throwing the ball inside a great deal and we wanted to find a way to be a little bit bigger on the on the defensive end but then you still have to within our offense maintain that versatility and I thought those three and others were able to do that but that's just an example of why that's going to be important for us. Offensive efficiency was you know really really high last week in general you, you count them out Marty game you score 110 points you shoot 66 percent which is a school record for the game you follow that up with 58 percent against a division one opponent in Montana is it I mean it, it, it doesn't feel like it could get a whole lot more smooth on that end of the floor for you right now. Well we're sharing the basketball and I think yesterday you saw us with we had 21 assists I think in eight turnovers so we're moving the basketball we're sharing the basketball we made some really good decisions about when to attack and where to move it to if they collapse and help. And Montana was very persistent about trying to keep us away from the rim and keep us away from the paint, which gave us more opportunities on the arc. And, and I thought we, we were efficient because we made a lot of those shots. You know, I'd like to believe that that's going to continue to happen for us because we do have young ladies who put a lot of time in and who can shoot the ball well. But you never know exactly where that where that can be in, in any, any type of situation. And so then it comes back to who are we defensively? And it's an area where we've been improving. It's an area where Montana really tested us yesterday. And we talk about our non-conference schedule being very challenging, but what we've liked about it as coaches is that we've seen teams that run a motion offense. 
We've seen teams that run set plays. We've seen teams that really space the floor and shoot it from the arc. We see teams that push it up and try to attack quickly. We see teams, you know, that are really um, diversified and can score in a lot of different ways. And, and so for us, that, that ability to see different styles of play is something that we're excited about in, in terms of helping us improve and learn what we have to do better to be ready for Summit League action. Well, you mentioned that non-conference schedule and maybe save the, the biggest test for last. South Carolina on the road in Columbia coming up uh, on Sunday the, the 22nd. And, and what a way to close the non-conference portion of your, your season. As, as you look at this team, it's a perennial power in, in women's college basketball. There's no doubt about that. Uh, maybe not as old of a team as they've had in some years, but, but boy, the, the talent level certainly hasn't dropped off with that reduction in the amount of birthdays that they have available to them, has it? South Carolina is a, a challenging matchup because they scored efficiently, scored a 46% clip. They shoot it at a 35% clip from the arc. But what makes South Carolina really special and unique among all women's basketball teams is who they are defensively. They are a team that's been known and they won a national championship because of their identity on the defensive end of the court. They're a team right now that's holding their opponents to scoring, I think it's 53 points a game, scoring at a 29% clip, shooting it at about like a 24% clip from the arc. The, probably the most amazing statistics about them is that they turn their opponents over, they get steals about 11 to 12 times a game. And then on top of that, they block shots nine to 10 times a game. So I don't know where that ranks in the NCAA in terms of the history books, but those numbers are just staggering what they can do on both ends of the court. They have really good size, 6'4", 6'4", 6'1", and it goes on and on, but they, they also have very good speed and they're also really skilled. So it's going to present a lot of challenges for us on the defensive end to slow them down, but it's also gonna provide great challenges for us offensively to figure out how to try to get really good opportunities and maximize the ability to get good shots against them. Well, and obviously not a, a lot of those attributes that you mentioned, not exactly easy things to replicate in practice leading up. So how do you go about this week of practice, getting ready for this game and putting yourself in position to be successful in one way, shape or another against the Gamecocks come Sunday? That's a great question. We're fortunate in women's basketball, women's basketball, volleyball, we have the ability to have practice guys. You know, and some of the time we tell the guys, oh, you're supposed to be a little bit shorter. You know, they're not 6'4", they're not 6'3", you know, but now we let those guys play and try to block every shot. And, and so we've been trying to work with our practice guys in their final exam schedules, our player schedules, to try to get them to help us simulate it to the best of our ability. At the same time, you know, they, I don't even know if they can simulate exactly what South Carolina does, but that's one of the ways that we'll try to, to get ready for next Sunday. All right, well, good luck to you, Don. It's certainly a lot of people are going to be paying attention to exactly what happens. And then, of course, looking forward to the Summit League season. Uh, excited to get conference play started and see what this team really can do uh, in the league. So thanks for your time, as always. Look forward to catching up again after the holidays. Sounds good. Thank you, Jeff.